I'm super excited to welcome you to our first in-person main meeting of the year. Um, woo, yeah, let's get a round of applause for that. I'm beyond excited. And it's great to see a lot of new faces here. Uh, I'm Erin Stumpf and I'm your 2022 president. Um, and before we dive into our agenda, I just wanna take a moment and acknowledge the tragedy that we had here in Sacramento over the weekend. Um, I know that our community will rise above this mass random act of violence and bring the people responsible to justice with hopefully no more violence. But I'd like to take a moment of silence to honor the victims and their families. Thank you. Okay, so we have an amazing speaker today, but before I introduce him, I'd like to bring Maurice Thomas up to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. One, two, three. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I like that. One, two, three is like short and sweet. So thank you for that, Maurice. So I'm, I'm going to introduce our speaker and I'm going to read you this really long, boring bio about Otto Katrina. But before I do that, um, I, I would just like to say that I'm extremely excited to kick things off in person this year with Otto. Um, I think he's known to many of you in this room, especially if you're involved already in uh, CAR. Um, but I'm uh, pleased to say that he's a friend and a, 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 a mentor to me. And I'm really excited that um, we can share the stage with him here for our first in-person meeting. So Otto Katrina is our 2022 CAR president, and he's been a full-time real estate broker and realtor since 2002. In addition to serving his clients, Otto is also active in his local state and national associations of realtors. Otto serves as a state director for the California Association of Realtors, where he has served as CAR's federal chairman and chairman for CAR's legislative committee. He has served as public policy liaison to CAR leadership overseeing federal and state legislation. Otto has also served in various leadership positions at the National Association of Realtors, including NAR director, member of the Issues Mobilization Committee, and Realtor Party Member Involvement Committee. He will serve on NAR's Executive Committee in 2022 and 2023. At the local level, Otto was 2011 president of the Bay East Association of Realtors, where he served on various committees, including strategic planning, board of directors, marketing, professional standards, and local government relations. How does this guy have time to sell real estate? Anyone, any, Otto, you want to let us know the secret? Distinguished in the real estate industry, Otto has been recognized by the Bay East Association of Realtors with numerous honors. He received the association's prestigious Realtor of the Year Award in 2007, the John A. Dedrick Distinguished Service Awards in 2009 and Outstanding Leadership Award in 2019. He's a member of NAR's President Circle and in 2016 was inducted into NAR's Hall of Fame. Active at the federal legislative level, Katrina, Otto Katrina, is a federal political coordinator for California Congressman Eric Swalwell and is a key contact for California Assembly Member Bill Quirk. When he isn't serving his clients, Otto serves on the board of directors of the Alameda County chapter of the 100 Club, which provides financial assistance to families of first responders who pass away in the line of duty. He is also a financial supporter of the Goodness Village, a community of 28 tiny homes built and managed, if I can manage to turn the page, by Crosswinds Church, providing transitional housing for homeless individuals in Livermore. Otto, Come on up. Good 
There you go. I've been live for quite a long time. <laughs> um, I, I've been all over. I've been back to DC on a federal lobby trip. I got to do a mic. <laughs> so, um, is that better? I'm sorry. Uh, about three weeks ago, our lobbying team was back in DC meeting with, uh, every year we go back and we meet with congressional members and Fannie, Freddie, uh, FHA, FH, FA, Treasury Department. The Treasury Department meeting this, this time was interesting because they wanted to talk to us about uh, cash buyers and money laundering. And I go, my buyers aren't even telling me if they're doing any money laundering. So, uh, <laughs> but it was interesting uh, trip back there, the dynamics. And it was nice because it's easier to go into the Capitol now with no mask and no verification than it is to go in some of the restaurants in San Francisco, you know, you got to show an ID and proof of birth and all that kind of stuff and everything. So um, Aaron asked me if I could come down and, and chat with you today. I have a hard stop at 10 o'clock, so I'd like to take some questions after we get done chatting a little bit, kind of give you an update what's going on in California. Uh, we're doing a press conference today with, uh, it's supposed to be, I think, 27 assembly members, and we are going to be asking for $600 million to be included in the budget for home ownership. Home ownership, not for transitional housing and nothing against homelessness, but we spend billions and billions of dollars a year on rental housing and additional housing for transitional. And we don't talk about home ownership and home ownership is the key for stronger communities, better education for our children. And uh, so we're gonna go there and see what happens today. So hopefully it won't be too many protesters there. Um, one thing I usually start off when I, when I talk about this is the fractionalization that exists in society today. Would you agree with me on that? You're either on this side or you're on that side. And one thing that we, the message that, that I am carrying on this year and I started a couple years ago and, and we're starting to get the buy-in is this whole stronger together about us putting our personal political ideologies off to the side. Because that's where we get in the argument about. We get in the argument about either a Democrat, depending where you are as a Democrat, or you're a progressive Democrat, or you're a moderate Democrat, you're a Republican, or you're a right-wing Republican. And we get in all this stuff and we agree, we have issues. We have issues in this country. Where we can agree on is how to come up with solutions, with viable solutions. And I'm, if you haven't found out already, I'm a pretty transparent guy. I am not seeking any political office. I have a year term trying to make some changes in this industry and with our association. And I made a commitment to serve you. I'm not looking to go to NAR. I'm not looking to run a public office. I am looking forward when my term's over to go back to my fishing and go fishing on the boat. But no, I, I'm a practitioner, I sell real estate. I sell real estate every day, just like you do. I do residential, I do commercial, I do a little bit of development. So I know the challenges that we face out there. The big challenges that we face, again, is not collaborating and not working together. And I know uh, over the years, uh, CAR sometimes gets criticized for making decisions on political decisions as far as bills go, depending on what side of the aisle. And I really advocate that we're all part of the realtor party. We're a strong alliance of realtors and realtor associations advocating for private property rights, for home ownership, and for pro-business individuals that support us. We live in California. Nobody knows it more than you all in Sacramento that we're in a supermajority state. And there's times that I have to sit, educate our members 
that there's only so much that we can do, that there is a thing called negotiations. There is a thing called collaboration, that we can be human beings and sit down at the table and talk about what our needs are. So uh, my, my ask is to, is to everyone is to remember that we're all part of the realtor party. Keep your political, personal ideologies when you're having your meetings, put those off to the, to the side. How many CAR directors are in the room right now? I wanna thank you. Thank you for your time away. These individuals put a phenomenal amount of time advocating on your behalf uh, at the state level. We're meeting, we're coming up here, matter of fact, probably about 3,000 of us coming up the end of May. May 27th, I think, is our legislative day, and I'm sure I, I saw it on the agenda. You guys are going to be promoting that. A April, April 27th. What did I say? March 27th? No, okay, May, May 27th. My calendar, it just goes. And I just, they, they point me where I'm supposed to go. So, so in all seriousness, April 27th, here in Sacramento at the Convention Center, please attend the legislative day if you can, because uh, we're, we're meeting with our, our assembly members and Senate, and uh, hopefully we can get some things across the finish line. Um, let me shut that off. Uh, again, when it comes to, we need to do strong, a better job as far as leadership goes. Because we, we argue over facts, not policy. And that's what we're all about at CAR is creating policy that's going to help us endure and be stronger together. Aaron wanted me to talk a little bit. Now, I'll talk a little bit about building bench. And you can see up on your, in any good team, ball team, football team, basketball team, you got your star players. But those star players, after a while, either get injured, retire, or move on. And some organizations do a great job in building bench where they can look to the right and have replacement players coming on in. And I can tell you, not all associations, realtor associations do that. And I applaud Aaron. And I've had the, 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 the opportunity to work with Aaron over the past few years. I remember, God, probably three years ago, uh, I saw her outside the convention center just by herself, wanted, you know, walking around. And I didn't know Aaron that well. And I went up to her and talked to her. We knew each other, but not, not well. And I said, Aaron, I said, what do you want to do? What do you want to do at CAR? And at that time, she was going for her master's in public policy. And that's when she told me public policy. I'm going, that's what we need on our team. That's what we need is, is somebody that's got that strong background. So uh, Aaron has been on uh, exec last year. She is uh, a phenomenal resource for us at CAR. And I can reassure you, she'll be a, a future CAR president within the next few years also. So I am excited about that. <laughs> She's part of a mentoring group that we started a couple of years ago with about 12. There was 12 of us, young realtors that, um, of diversity. And we were meeting, and unfortunately, once I got into the presidency, I have not been consistent, but we met every Thursday from 1.30 to 2.30. And we would talk about everything from the transaction to forms to CAR, unplugged. We would talk about anything. And I tell you what, the cohesiveness of this very diverse group was just phenomenal on, on what we've done. So I applaud, I applaud those realtors because a majority of them will be future leaders at, at CAR. So building bench is important. If you don't volunteer, if you're looking for some volunteer time, please sign up with the association. I reassure you, I did not do this to get referrals, but my referral business from traveling around the state and around the country, it's nice. <laughs> it's nice. I didn't do that because of that, but it's a byproduct of me being away from home and meeting people. And I'm not plugging, but I live in Castro Valley in the East Bay, so. <laughs> Let's let Aaron know, and I'll take care of your clients for you. Thank you, sir, here. So people ask me, people ask me what keeps me up at night. And, th and this is all in all seriousness. Um, and there's a lot of issues. Fire insurance. About four years ago, I've got a home up in, in the mountains, up in, uh, in Twain Hart area. 
and I was paying $1,100 for fire insurance or for homeowner's insurance. From 11 to 1700, from 1700 to 4800, back then, four years ago. And I talked to CAR leadership. I said, my concern is for the first time home buyer. And that's when homes were still, we could get some homes in Placerville up in, in Tuolumne County in rural areas for 275, 3, 350, first time entry level buyers. Those days are kind of, those days are gone. But for a first time home buyer, to pay an additional two, three hundred dollars a month is the difference between food on the table and putting gas in a car to go to work. So we've been actively working with the insurance companies. We've been working with Commissioner Lara. A lot of people say, well, why don't we just it's not that easy, because if we push the insurance companies too much, what they'll do is they'll vacate California. And I know with my E&O insurance this last December um, and I'm clean. But they told me that the current e and insurance that I had at that time had vacated and left California. So we need to make sure that the insurers stay in California, but we need to hold them accountable also. Last year, we lost over two and a half million acres of, of, uh, of land. The good news is, is that we had a reduction as far as structures go and losses. So hopefully this year will be better. But from what I'm reading and the research that we're doing, it doesn't look good for the fire season this year. The drought is, is we're in a severe drought. Um, my son is a second year law student at, uh, at Hastings Law School in San Francisco, and he specializes in water litigation and water policy. Kid's bright, he takes after his mom. And um, so I, I bounce things off him, you know, and he's the kind of kid you ask him what time it is and he tells you how to build a watch. And he said, just give me the facts, just give me the bullet, give me the bullet points. But this water situation is serious. And when we talk that we need housing, we need to be strategic on where we can build and where there's water. We know that on the Central Coast, in Monterey, Cambria, down on the Central Coast, they don't have water permits. So let's don't waste our time talking about creating and building more housing down there. Sacramento, Natomas area. I was reading an article in the B the other day. That's kind of the new, newer area that's developing in Sacramento. You guys have water. Um, Modesto in the Central Valley, I have family that owns 83 acres of almonds, and it's right across the street from the Amtrak station. Perfect scenario. Water, almonds are the biggest users of water, but to convert that agricultural land into housing, we're in contract with DR Horton to build about almost 500 homes on that property. We're still going through the initial process, this is a suitability period with the city, but we have to look to be more strategic and just say, instead of saying that we just need housing, we need to be strategic, make sure we've got water, we've got infrastructure. We talk about housing back in DC. One of the things that we talked to legislators about is converting commercial. I mean, how many, re I, I haven't, didn't do any driving around here, but in the Bay Area, there is so much retail space that is just for lease and closed. And a lot of that's not coming back. So there is a bill, HR 8759 in, in Congress, that what they want to do is give tax credits for conversion from commercial office building and converting that into housing. The infrastructure is already in place, the sewers in place, the roadways are in place. So we're actively advocating and working on that also in DC. So. Um, I got a little bit off, off topic about the fire, but we're actively working with the insurance companies and some of the um, entities out there that are representing uh, the insurance. And then and Carolyn Wright. Carolyn Wright, that used to be your government affairs director here. Kayla, she is one of the chief uh, lobbyists for the insurance companies. And I've had, matter of fact, I had dinner with her at Pebble Beach a couple months ago. So just getting the intel on looking at the other side too. Um, COVID, I think, I hope we're done. I mean, I'm, we, we go, we don't, we go, don't wear a mask, wear a mask. Um, I, I, I want it to be done. I, I really do. Uh, and in all seriousness, you know, we, we plan to have our meeting in Monterey this last um, January, I think it was. And we had to end up pulling the plug a couple of weeks before. I know a lot of people were unhappy. Uh, I was definitely unhappy because we didn't get to have the big party that we were supposed to have. But uh, we're going to meet in Sacramento, and uh, we'll have a big party there. 
New things on horizon that I'm concerned about right now is, and, and, and you know, I, I grew up in, in, in an Italian family um, in a restaurant business. My dad, and they didn't have computers back then. It was pencil and paper and notebook. And my dad used to keep the books. And my dad could get a feeling on how business was and about how to respond to it. My dad was not one of these guys that waited for the fire to put it out. When he saw smoke, he got into action. And I've kind of inherited that a little bit. And I'm seeing some red flags out there that I think we need to be cautious of. And again, I'm not here to put doom and gloom. We've had some of our best years. We had 440,000 units that we sold last year. But our inventory continues to keep on going down. But inflation. When inflation numbers came out originally, they said it was going to be temporary. And I, I, I didn't believe it. And uh, Powell said, yeah, it's just going to be for a few months. Inflation right now is it's approaching 8%. Other parts of the country, it's, it's exceeding 10, 11, 12%. So that is one red, red, red flag that I am concerned about. The other one is um, these high gas prices. These high gas prices aren't going to go down. They're going to continue to stay at, at what they are. And then um, the other thing is the war that's going on in Ukraine right now. And my heart goes out to the people and to the kids of, of what's going on in, in Ukraine. But those three elements right there equal a recession. And I don't know how soft or how hard. I don't think it's going to be like we had in 08. I was reading an article yesterday was talking about a recession that it could possibly be a soft. It's not going to be housing that's going to cost this recession. And that's good because we have a lot of equity out there. Our lending standards are still tough. Uh, so I'm fortunate about that. So I guess what I'm saying is don't go out and lease any brick and mortar places uh, I think the next couple of years, we're going to have some challenges. Um, inventory continues to still be a challenge for us in our business. And it's throughout the state. There's just very little inventory that's out there. We had the inversion of the two-year note and the 10-year note. And I don't want to get into weeds on that. But we had a short period there last week. That's another red flag. And again, these red flags that go up, it's kind of like the whack a mo they're staying up. They're not staying down. So that's things that we have to pay attention to. Interest rates. I was at Inman Disconnect down in Palm Springs a couple of weeks ago. And I think that week alone went up 50 basis points. And rates are what, close to five now? 4.75, five, over. And we're all going, okay, where, where is it going to not stop? but where are the buyers going to start falling out? So you guys getting a picture of what I'm saying here? Things are, the dynamics are changing. Again, I don't want to do doom and gloom, but um, just be cautious. Affordability, one in 25% affordability rate in California right now, statewide. Some areas down in Silicon Valley down to 15%. So it's tough for first-time home buyers to get into homes. Cash buyers, 18% of our market throughout the state. 35%, 35.5% are first-time home buyers. And we're starting to see that number kind of drip. So with interest rates going up, we are going to see that first-time home buyer have some compression on that. <clears throat> DOJ lawsuit. How many people are familiar with the DOJ lawsuit with our MLS? I wish I could give you updates on that. <laughs> but there has been no progress. We had reached a solution with the Department of Justice, National Association of Realtors last year, and uh, with the administration change or whatever, they went ahead and reneged on the, on, the, on the agreement. And so we're still in a holding pattern on that, on what's gonna happen. But um, there is talk about the buyer broker agreement. We put a task force together on a buyer broker agreement, and we're working on that. Uh, the homeless situation. Uh, I drove around here last night on the way to dinner. Had a great dinner at the firehouse last night. Great dinner. I'd never, all the times I've been to Sacramento, I've never been to Old Town. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah. And I thought I'd been all over Sacramento, but I haven't. But the homeless situation, um, 
my heart goes out to the home situation where I get pissed off at is about our elected officials that spend billions and billions of dollars and we're not getting any results. And this trajectory discontinues from 130 to 140, now 167,000 homeless people throughout the state. And I think it's gonna get worse yet. Um, Aaron had alluded to earlier, the church I attend in Livermore got a grant from the city or grant from the county and constructed 29 townhomes. It's a great project. They provide counseling services. They provide um, uh, any kind of services or necessities that they need. You have to work. That's one of the mandates. And if you don't have a job, you got to work on the church property if it's sweeping or just pulling, pulling weeds or doing something. You got to pay rent, $200 to $600 a month. So it's a very structured environment, but these are transitional from people off the streets that are putting people into tiny homes that have a bed, have a two burner stove and a bathroom and a shower. And that's what we need to do is, is more projects like this. Last year, the state of California spent $12 billion on homeless services. If you take the median price of $786,000, that's 15,000 homes we could have constructed last year. And that money's gone. So um, I'm empathetic to that. I see it when I go see my son in, in San Francisco. Uh, the other night we went to go see Harry Potter. We're walking down the streets about 11 o'clock at night on Market Street. And it's like 12 o'clock noon. There's just hundreds of people out on the street, whatever they're smoking or injecting or, or doing what they're doing. And it, it's, it's a shame. It really is a shame. Legislative challenges. You guys here in Sacramento, um, rent control. Rent control has just been a continual uh, poke in the eye for a lot of us, especially those of us that are landlords. And tenants are working, um, not all of them, but there are tenants that are taking advantages of the COVID restrictions and uh, that are hurting small pop landlords like us, you know, not the big corporate. Uh, we recently had the extension of the eviction moratorium last week. Some people were upset. Why CAR? Why do we get more involved and not and object it? Um, the simple solution is that if we did, the local cities would have more stringent rent controls. So we did go for another 90 days on that. And we'll see what happens when it expires. But uh, you hear rents throughout the United States are up 40%. And now... And I was telling our legislative people, I had dinner with our, our lobbyists last night, telling them those are examples that we should tell our legislators because we are capped at 5% plus CPI. So the max that we can go up on our rents is 10%. But what's going on in California is now going on throughout the United States. Rents throughout the United States are up 40%. Rents, people are, when I travel, my colleagues back at NER, we're having our meetings you know, they, they used to say, God, you people from California really screwing, screwing us up over here. And I say, yeah, but you guys are enjoying the appreciation, though, aren't you? And it, it's all over. I mean, it's just all over. And, and a lack of housing also. Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, uh, Texas, Idaho. It's just phenomenal, the effect of people that are leaving California. A couple, uh, before I go into the four pillars, electrification. Um, climate Action Plan, how many people know about CAP? Uh, climate Action Plan is a, a big thing that each cities have to come up with a program. And one that we did, we were successful in fighting in Livermore, was where they wanted to do a, a point of sale for the electrical panel, for the main breaker. And I don't know how many of you have put a new panel in lately, but I don't know, $8,500, $10,000, $12,000 for a new panel. And we were successful in defeating that. My big call out to all of you, we got to get more involved in local politics. We have to do a better job of having a relationship with our elected officials. And I'm talking about parks and recreation. I'm talking about supervisors. I'm talking about city councils. I'm talking about school boards. We need to get out of the photo op because we all love to take pictures with the politicians, right? And they all come to us when it's election time but we need to make sure that we have those relationships so when these bills come down and there's those calls for actions and we're making those calls, 
they know who we are as realtors and they know what's negotiable and they know where we draw the line in the sand and say, this is non-negotiable item. It's your livelihood. And there's only so many of us that can fight this, but we need to engage and get a larger group of people to, to, to get engaged. And I, one thing that I, and I get uh, goosebumps is the amount of realtors that are getting engaged and running for elected office throughout the state of California. And in Sacramento, I've asked that if they are elected official, if they're a realtor and elected official, I wanna get them on stage. I wanna put the spotlight on them for them engaging with their community and taking, because sometimes in the communities, realtors, are, we're not the most favored people. We're classified because we're all driving a Mercedes and we're all making whatever percent of, of commission. And it's unfortunate because realtors are the strength and the threat in the communities. When the elected officials need us or donations, they come to us. When the schools need donations, when the baseball teams need a sponsorship, they come to us. Everybody comes to us when they need something. But when we need something, we get hesitation and that's where we need to engage and get. And that's where leadership comes in. And that's one of our big four pillars that we've been working at at the state level. And my cry out to you is to get involved. Get involved. I don't care what party you are, but get involved in your local politics. If things piss you off, let people know that. Meet with your elected officials. Tell them what the ramifications. Some of the decisions that they're making are having short-term gains, but long-term negative ramifications for us. And if you want to be in this business down the road, stop it now. Stop it now. I get a little passionate about that. Um, so leadership development is a big, one of our key pillars. And I, and I applaud Aaron uh, and Kelly for what they've done here at Sacramento, especially this last two years. It, it has not, I'll be honest with you, the last two years suck. I mean, it has not been sitting in front of that computer just one Zoom meeting after another Zoom meeting. This is what I like is people to get out and engage. This is where we get culture. This is where we get pumped up and we want to go out and we want to kick butt. So uh, leadership development is a big proponent that we're really pushing with our local associations. We have approximately 100 associations throughout California. And I meet with them on a quarterly basis along with our new CEO, John Seabree. And we get them engaged and get them pumped up also. Uh, the other thing is climate change and sustainability. It's kind of been something that's been, yeah, it, it's makeup, it's makeup, it's makeup. Sustainability and climate change is real. This drought and water are real. And we need to address it, particularly with housing. So we put together uh, a task force. We've got 15 people with three staff members that we've allocated that that's what they're focusing in on. Uh, the other component, again, I told you about is the realtor party. In Sacramento, you're going to see some phenomenal phenomenal uh, balloons and banners. We've got, uh, we're giving away jackets, like 700 jackets with the Realtor Party of California logo. We're giving away, uh, not briefcases, but portfolios and a bunch of giveaways. So uh, again, legislative days are a big deal. Um, so leadership development, Realtor Party, sustainability. Um, those are the key issues that we're working on this year. And uh, political advocacy. We need more engagement. We can only do so much at the state level. And, and the thing that really, when I spent two years traveling and campaigning for this office, people would say, well, how come CAR is not doing this? Or they, the, the bill, we're having challenges. And I said, those people in Sacramento, they come from your local community. Your assembly member down in Orange County is in Sacramento do a better job sending better quality people to Sacramento that are realtor friendly and will be a hell of a lot ahead, right? Don't blame CAR. Don't blame the Sacramento legislature. Do a better job at the local level. So that's been our focus is we can fix the problem, but we're not going to fix it just during my year. It's going to take us years to create that culture to... Uh, to do that. So I can go on and, 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 and talk, but I want to take some questions. Um, be with you. Well, you didn't wait, waste it all. And, and, and you can ask me hard questions too. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I've, I've been up against the best 
and uh, everything from Prop 19 to SB9 to whatever. So, what time do we have, Eric? We have about 10 to 15 minutes left. 15 minutes? Okay, good. Yeah. Anybody have a question? <laughs> Troublemaker. Hey, Otto. Um, so, you had your crystal ball out a minute ago predicting the future with inflation and everything. So we all know during COVID, you know, so many of the Bay Area people came here up to Tahoe, more space, more room, all of that. It's gone on so long, you know, this um, incredible appreciation in homes, which is really scary to me, who's been around a long, long time. And, you know, there's a home in Granite Bay that was bid over a million dollars. I mean, you know, your average home is going 60 over, 70 over, 100 over. How long can this, how long can this go on? And so, so what we're seeing, I, I, I hear that all over, all over the state. And depending on... I, I hear that all over the state. There, there's an agent in Campbell, you guys know where Campbell, California is, right outside of San Jose. All the, the, the rich tech kids out there, you know, they're making... You know, they make about 200 grand a year, but they're making a million bucks a year in their options and whatever. Uh, this one agent is advertising full page ad of what the list price was and what he went over on all the prices, 300, 500, 700, a million. Um, I think we're, that, that's going to start slowing down. I, I really think that um, instead of getting 10 or 12 offers, we're going to get two offers. Remember, we only have one property. We only have one house. We've been spoiled. And these agents that, that well, I got 27 offers. I don't want to go through 27 offers. I want two offers that are good that I can put them against each other and try to get the highest price that I can. Right? And, I, and I'm a listing agent, so I'm blessed. I really am blessed. I, I mean, to be a buyer's agent in, in this market in this past couple of years, I've had agents crying. And I said, I'll, I'll, do, I'll, I'll, I'll help you get there, but this is how you have to write the offer. Well, my client doesn't want to do it. You're not going to get the property. So, you know, I really do think that education for realtors, whenever you can take education classes here at the association or at CAR, take them. Learn the tricks of the trade of what other people are doing. Um, I don't, we're not going to see, I don't think we're going to see a, a market crash. I mean, I'm, I'm watching Wall Street. Uh, there's a lot of Wall Street money out there. I'm watching the stock market. Again, these red flags are going up. I think we can start, instead of seeing 23% appreciation, we were projected this year to 5.2% appreciation. That's not bad appreciation, 5%. I'll take that all day long, you know. So um, it, we are starting to see some softening. And I think a lot of these agents out there, which I say a lot, I say there's a good amount of agents out there that are underpricing their properties. And those of us that have been doing this long time, I don't know what the price anymore. I really don't. I mean, I look at comps. I'll give you an example real quick. Friends of mine from church have a two bedroom, two bath home in Danbury Park in Pleasanton. Hot area, but it's a duet, a duet. 1,345 square feet, two bedroom, two bath. If you're talking in the kitchen, you can hear it in the bedroom. That's, it's just real, real small. So I call a, a colleague of mine up and I said, Bernard, I said, would you go pending on a model similar to this one around the block? He says, we went, went on a million, a million 50 and a, or a million 225, they got a million 250 for it pending. So good. So I got this information. I'm, these are very close friends of mine. And Frank's wife wears the pants in the family. And she told me, so we're talking, and I'm not mentioning anything about price. I'm not talking about anything. She goes, well, we want a million four. And I'm going, that's $1,000 a foot to do it. You can see, I mean, there's no place to go. I mean, if you're on a Zoom meeting in the kitchen, everybody in the house can hear you. <laughs> so we go a million two ninety five. One showing for the week. And I'm going, yeah, right? I was right. You're wrong. She calls me up a week later. She goes, we need to reduce the price. I said, really? What, 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 how did you come up with that? 
So we we knocked the price to a million one fifty million one one fifty. It's like Walmart. It, the place just goes crazy with showings. One point three nine zero, all cash, twenty five day close. I, you don't. I don't know anymore. I, I don't know. I don't know where to price. I knew I was priced too high, coming out that I should have been softer, but. And then I got a couple of other agents that are going live, and they go, "Can you share? We're having appraisal problems." I said, "I don't have to worry about an appraisal because it's all cash." But they do. Go ahead. Dimas Papadopoulos, Home Smart IK Realty. Thanks for coming, by the way. What is the what's Car's uh, position on uh, low income housing, yeah, affordable housing, but low income housing? Basically, I think you need. I think you need to clarify housing. We use that terminology, affordable housing, that has a negative connotation to it. There's different levels of depending on what the AMI is, the average medium income, depending on what county and part of the state that you're in. Uh, we're very strong proponents of affordable ownership housing. The association has just got formal approval last year on 131 affordable units moderate in Los Angeles for workforce housing. And that's the terminology that we like to use is workforce housing. Uh, the doc, or not the doctors, but the nurses, firefighters, school teachers. Those are, um, we're very, very, very strong proponents of, of affordable housing. The challenge is, and I wanna be cautious how I say this, in development, you've got a couple components. You've got CEQA, how many people know CEQA? California Environmental Quality Act is one entity. And there's some special interest groups, i.e. the building trades, the unions that will file litigation if the developer is going to go in and build with non-union labor, depending if the construction is on a, on a horizontal, this or vertical. So there are some challenges as far as that goes. But we are very strong supporters of, of affordable housing. That's like I said, one out of four in California can afford to buy a house, and we need more supply. And that's what I'm going after this, to go on the capital steps for that press conference, and hopefully we can get some money from them. And if, you, and if anybody posts my email, if anybody wants to call me uh, or send me an email, I'm more than happy to, to get back to you and, and respond. Yes, ma'am. We are actively in the middle of the fourth industrial revolution. The real estate industry isn't moving as far as construction is concerned. There are very well known and tested construction materials available to make building homes more affordable. There's the SIP construction, there's the 3D technology. Where is NAR, SAR, CAR and all of that? When are we going to get behind that? Because oh. that's been one of the biggest reasons why housing is not affordable. Yeah, we, we are definitely behind it. And uh, the, the challenge is, is right here in Sacramento. And Sacramento tries to pass legislation to expedite construction or ADU construction or high density construction. But the challenge is the local cities don't want to be mandated by the state on what to do. And that's where the challenge is. I was on a, on a, on a Zoom call on a, on a real estate summit last week with various elected officials in the East Bay, and I was one of the, the, the guests there. And that's a question that came up, and I said, one of the biggest issues facing us for construction is your neighbor, is the nimbyism that exists in our local communities. I had the city councilwoman send me a private chat. That is so disrespectful that you word, use the word nimbyism. I'm the president of this estate association. My goal is to help put people into homes. If that offends you, tough. <laughs> so those are the challenges that we face. NIMBIA is one of the biggest ones. Construction, you talk about construction. There's a facility on Mare Island called Factory IO. Anybody heard of Factory IO? The old warehouses where the women constructed submarines during the war on Mare Island. They've converted it to inside modular construction. And this project is phenomenal. Union labor, 
Carpenters Union, Jay Bradshaw, a good friend of mine, is the president of the local. 43,000 members from Fresno up to Oregon border. They show up at city council meetings with their contractors or their, their hard hat guys. They teach them how to go up to the microphone and how to confront the city councils to do housing. But where their challenge is, is at the city council. They had a hundred unit complex. And what it is, it's, it's a plug and play. They build them inside, then they go to the site and they construct them. And within two weeks, they've got a project. In the city of Oakland, they had a hundred project, a hundred units in this Mare Island in the parking lot for over a year because of the red tape of Oakland, the city of Oakland. So Jay and his group threaten Libby Schaff and the, and the city that if they don't move forward, that they're gonna go and demonstrate. That project was constructed, approved, and now it's it's got 100 people living in it right now. So the cities, the local cities are, are some of the biggest obstacles that we're facing. And there is some construction problems going on right now with price of goods and, and I know a contractor or Developers are waiting for garage doors. They're waiting for windows. They're waiting for stuff on the end. I'm going to use my presidential privilege and ask the last question, the wow. hardest hitting question. Otto, who's better behaved, Luca or Bella? So, uh, <laughs> so, so for you, you know, I have two dogs. I have. We lost our, our gold retriever 14 years during COVID, uh, the first year of COVID, which was, was real hard for me. Uh, I still get choked up about it. So um, I told my wife, no more. That's it. I, I've been through this. So we ended up getting a, uh, a golden doodle. And I, anybody here have a golden doodle? They're, they're, they're like they're on, on, I don't know what they're on, like Mountain Dew. I mean, they're <laughs> They're, they're flying through the air. They're flying over. I, and my wife goes, do you see that? I go, they're flying over couches. Um, and, and they're very, they're very loving. They're very, they, they, they want attention. So when I'm on Zoom, everybody's making fun or everybody knows who my dogs are. So I, my wife wanted a golden doodle. And I've always, always, always had golden retrievers. And I said, I really like a golden retriever. So matter of fact, we... Um, I put an order in or whatever, met with the breeder, and we ended up getting Bella, who is our golden retriever. So within a year, I got two puppies. They're kind of chaotic in the house, especially because sometimes I'm on meetings that I'll have 800 people on a Zoom, and I'm leading the meeting, and the dogs start going crazy. Well, my dogs start going crazy. Your dogs on Zoom start going crazy. So everybody on Zoom is laughing because the, the dogs are going so Thank you for asking. They're, they're, they're both. Luca, I got to tell you, the female, she runs the house and she's the youngest. She, yeah. yeah. How it usually is. Yeah. Hey, um, if you want to write down my email address, I'll give it to you real quick um, in all seriousness. If you have any solutions, any suggestions, uh, I'm very transparent. Hopefully you, you saw that today. Uh, but if you have any solutions, any, any, any connections, any connections across the street or whatever, um, we'll take anything that we can. But my email is O-C-A-T-R-I-N-A -A at Gmail, Ocatrina at Gmail. And my cell phone is 510-507-8226. And if you need those, just let Aaron. Aaron's got that, that information. But I wanna, I wanna thank you guys for your time today. I know you got a full agenda. Uh, say a little prayer for me as I go to the Capitol steps today to, to meet with uh, the assembly members in the press over there and hopefully um, are asked we can get some more money for some home ownership and to help each and every one of us. So God bless everybody. Everybody have a great week. Thank you.